Hello everyone. In this first video of this two-part video series, we are going to talk about avoiding consumer debt. Before we get started, I want to say a huge thank you for getting us to 1000 subscribers. I am so grateful that I started this channel and that I've been sharing my journey and to have the opportunity to connect with everybody that I've connected with from my audience, from watching other people's YouTube videos, all the way to the financial coaching clients that I now have. So thank you so much. None of this would have been possible, obviously, without people watching my videos. So I'm just going to continue with what I've been doing. I am excited to see where this will go and I have lots of plans for the near future, but overall, just thank you so much. Like I said, this is gonna be a two-part video series. So this one is gonna be about avoiding consumer debt, and then my video for next week will be about avoiding student loan debt because I feel like both of those areas have separate tips. Avoiding debt is relatively simple. However, if it was easy and it was that simple, then most people would not be in debt, but that is not the case. Debt is very normal, as we all know, and I don't know the statistics on it, but I would say almost every American has debt or has had debt. My first major tip is to have an emergency fund. And at this point, I think everybody's emergency fund should be very well cushioned, as in $1,000 or even 2000 3000 is probably not enough for most people. Emergencies come up all the time. It can look any sort of way. It may be a medical emergency. It may be your car. It may be a dental emergency. It could be anything. But if you do not have the cash to cover that emergency, you are likely going to either go into credit card debt or have to take out a personal loan of some sort. And overall, just having an emergency fund, especially a well-funded emergency fund, is very comforting because you know yourself, you know your life, you know the, the typical financial setbacks that you've experienced. And when you have a few thousand dollars or whatever amount that you feel comfortable with in your bank account, it just makes it a lot easier to sleep at night. Going along with that, I highly suggest sinking funds. I have a whole video on sinking funds where I discuss what they are, where to put them, things like that. But I think it's another good thing to have because typically you're going into debt in this because of the same things over and over. It may be because you're spending on travel or you're spending on gifts or you're, you're spending on car maintenance. But if you have your emergency fund, plus several sinking funds for the things that you pay for on a regular basis, then you are more likely to set yourself up for success financially, and you will probably avoid going into further debt. My next tip is that if you cannot afford to purchase it with your debit card right now, you should not be purchasing it with your credit card. And I know this tip sounds really obvious, but most people, myself included in the past, did not care about that. If there was something that I wanted and I knew that the money that I had in my bank account for the month would not cover that, I really didn't care. I would just charge it to my credit card and think, oh, I'll just pay the monthly payment. So obviously with that comes revolving credit card debt because if you don't have enough cash to pay for whatever it is that you're purchasing, you're not gonna pay off that whole charge on your credit card. But if you did have enough money, what you could do instead is make a purchase on your credit card and take advantage of any cash back or points, any reward system that you may have, and then immediately transfer money from your checking account to your credit card to pay it off. And that's exactly what I do now. And if there is something that I cannot afford in cash, I do not purchase it. My third tip is to have a budget that you actually stick to and keep up with and track your spending every single month because most people do not know where their money is going. Most people don't know how much debt they have. Most, pe most people don't know where their finances stand. And if you start to just become aware of these things and plan month to month, then you will see a huge shift in your financial situation. 
I know that it's not exciting. I know that it may not be fun for a lot of people, but your budget is going to help you to save in areas that you want to save. It's going to help you to build up that emergency fund. It's going to help you control your spending and your problem areas. And when you track your spending, you become more aware of where your money is going and the things that you need to work on. So it's a completely unsexy tip. When you're really intentional about your money and start to take things seriously, you'll see that you'll decrease your debt and avoid going into debt. My fourth tip is to know and understand your weaknesses. So if your weakness is Target or Walmart or any other store or maybe just clothes or bags, completely avoid that because you're just asking for yourself to spend money. And obviously you also want to develop the discipline and self-control when it comes to those things. but. The reality is a lot of people don't have that discipline to walk into a store that they love and typically purchase dozens of things and not purchase something. It's kind of like for somebody who is trying to lose weight. If you are working with a nutritionist or a trainer, the advice that they're going to give you is to get all the junk out of your house, to get whatever it is that you are eating that is making you consume more calories, if that's ice cream or chips or Pop-Tarts, anything like that, you should probably get it out of your house because if it's not there, it's going to make it more difficult to eat. And if you avoid going to those stores, then it's going to make it a lot easier to not spend money there. My final tip is to choose your partner wisely. Now, I know this doesn't apply to everybody. Some people may want to be single, for forever, but most people will have a partner in their lifetime. And to be honest, financial trouble comes when your partner is not financially stable. And it's obviously even worse if the both of you are not financially stable. And unfortunately, most people do not talk about finances before marriage. And financial struggles are apparently the number one cause of divorce these days. And that is just not okay depending on who you're living with or who you are dating or married to, then your financial habits probably reflect what they do as well. So your partner has the potential to influence you to go into further debt or to spend more money, or on the other hand, to have healthy financial habits like budgeting and tracking their spending and living below their means. But overall, your partner in life is a huge part of your life. And if they are causing you to have financial problems, then that is not ideal. Now, of course, there are some vague tips, like don't keep up with the Joneses. Basically, if you see somebody upgrading their car or moving into a new home or going on lavish vacations, don't feel the need to live up to that as well because they probably are taking on more debt to live that lifestyle. Of course, live below your means. Again, that goes back to budgeting and being aware of where your money is going. So many people have accepted the fact that they live paycheck to paycheck or they may even be living within their means, but I think it's important to live below your means if you actually want to pay off debt and make more progress with your finances. Paying off your debts is another huge thing because typically if you already have debt, you're more likely to go into further debt and you're just going to be spending a lot more money in general because you're losing money on interest and things like that. And because of all of those minimum payments, it will be harder for you to pay your bills or make other purchases in your life. And the final thing I would say is to just continue to educate yourself in finances. And if you're somebody who has a spending problem or who has a lot of debt or wants to learn about investing, learn about those things because we don't learn about finances, personal finances in particular in high school. We don't learn about it in college. A lot of our parents are not even educated on it. So many of us don't learn it through childhood or growing up. And so there are many free resources for you to take advantage of to continue to further your education on personal finance. Because the more you know, obviously, the less likely you will make poor financial decisions. So those are my main tips for avoiding consumer debt. 
Comment down below what you think of these tips or if you have any other suggestions for anybody who may be watching this. Before I started filming this video, I actually was looking into my debt numbers and there were a few months where I went into further debt throughout this journey, but the last time that I went into further debt was November 2019. And I will say that now that I have solid sinking funds and emergency fund, I'm good. <laughs> and on top of that, I've been doing the no spend year and things like that and it has helped tremendously. So yeah, I firmly stand behind all of these tips I just offered, but that is it for this video. Again, thank you so much for helping me get to 1000 subscribers. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video.